Мир вам. Я хочу поизвиняться тем, которые не будут понимать или разговаривать по-английски. Я сегодня буду вести проповедь на английском языке. Для одних это будет ободрение, а для других просто смотреть на проповедника. Um, before I start, I would like to confess something that I have done. Um, this is way back in the early 2000s when I was a small, shy, typical four-year-old. I was a single child at the time. A lot of you may know that. A lot of you are familiar with that. And I spent most of my days playing with toys by myself since I had no siblings. Um, time came around and ev morning passed, evening came, and I was not a big fan of evenings because it meant it's time to go to bed. And as a typical four-year-old, no one likes to go to bed, am I right? And <clears throat> I was not the biggest fan of that, and I would always ask the light to be on when I was going to sleep. Um, well, I was afraid of the dark, that's my confession. <laughs> As many kids are, they're afraid of the dark, and I was no secret to that. And I would always ask for the light to be on. I gotta say, I wasn't always successful, but when I was, it was always a comfort. I needed the light, a light of some sort, to keep myself secure and keep myself confident that there's darkness and I'm, and I'm not alone. So my parents got myself a nightlight, and I thank them till this day. <laughs> and at night, the light shone, and I was happy, and it came to the rescue. You see, physical light is necessary for physical life. The earth would certainly change if we just all of a sudden stopped sunlight. A forest, a forest full of trees, beautiful flowers, they will never move away from light because they are positively drawn to the light, to be in the light. In the same way, spiritual light is necessary for spiritual life. This can be a good test of our standing in the, in the Word and in Christ, and every believer should always tend towards spiritual things. He should pray. He should listen to the Word. When we're not in church, we should always have consistent fellowship, the Word of God, and so on. You see... The story in the beginning was a really small, short, I guess, a simple story. And the examples thereof in the beginning, they were just something easy to follow up on. But aren't we all scared of the dark at some levels and don't see what's actually around us? How many of us have tried to act in the dark? I remember one time on our city block, lights completely shut down and you couldn't cook. You couldn't go on your phone. Well, you could, but you couldn't go on your computer. It seemed like you just froze, and it was dark. In light, there is life. In the absence of life, in the absence of light, in the dark, it is much more harder to complete those tasks. Cook, drive, read, and more. And today we're going to be talking about the light, the way, and the one that can take, away, take us away from the consistent darkness that we always are in. And with him, darkness will no longer have a hold of us, and we will be set free by him. My sermon today is called The Light of Life. This passage is recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12, and I would like to read it for you. The Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Today we will deep, uh, dive deep into this verse and uncover the truths that it holds. And before we begin, we have to know a little bit of the context. What is going on? What, where are we? What is happening? And I'd like to completely say that with this statement that Jesus offers, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, was spoken during the Hebrews festival of booths or tabernacles. It was a reminder of God's faithfulness and, uh, and him being with them, guiding them during the years in the wilderness, the 40 years in the wilderness. And during that, time, during that time, God guided them through a pillar of fire, a giant light. And in the beginning of chapter 8, we see that Jesus came early in the morning to the temple to teach people. 
But he was interrupted by the scribes and the Pharisees when they brought a woman that was caught in the act of adultery. This was simply a test that the elders prepared to trap Jesus and to have charge against him because he was consistently in their way. He was always there and he was always saying the things that were right, the things that from, were from above. And they wanted to trap him in. But they have unsuccessfully lost, brutally lost, when Jesus said the following words, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw the stone at her. They went away one by one, leaving the woman without harm or punishment. Christ didn't punish her. He didn't condemn her. He forgave her. He sent her on her way and commanded her not to sin anymore. The Pharisees didn't punish her, nor did they condemn her, but she was forgiven of her sins by Jesus himself. Jesus continues to speak to the crowd after that interruption as if nothing happened and says the following verse that I just read. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus continues to speak to the crowd and, uh, I apologize. If we look deep into the Old Testament, we see that the psalm writer and the, and the writer of Psalms often spoke of God's word as light. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 43, 3 says, Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. And since Jesus is the word, it makes perfect sense that he is also the light. So when we break this down into three parts, this verse, we will see what truth it holds. The first point I would like to talk about is the first part of the verse. I am the light of the world. In the book of John, there are seven times when Jesus says the following statements, I am blank. In this case, I am the light. And this is the second of the statements. And these statements are really important to us as believers because we can actually see the different angles of Christ's nature of, of God and his work as Savior on the earth. As Jesus was claiming to be the light, he was claiming to be God and Israel's Messiah. He was sent by God to light all the nations. And it was actually interesting because when he was saying this, again, I spoke that the Feast of the Tabernacles was, uh, was up. And something interesting is that during those times, they would light up golden light stands. There were specifically four and they were 75 feet tall. So at night, it actually shone across the whole city of Jerusalem. And for them to receive the words that Jesus is light to all the world. And these are the Israelites that were celebrating their longing, their 40 years in the desert. Jesus is saying this, that he is the light to the all world, not just them. And it just brought into my mind that Jesus alone brings salvation to the world, to a corrupted, sinful world. And back then, in the old times, the Israelites had a pillar of fire after the uh, exodus of Egypt. Now past the Old Testament, now in the present, we have Jesus, which is our light. The one who follows him, Jesus promised, that will not walk in darkness of sin, the world, and Satan, but will have the light that produces spiritual life. He is saying he is from the Father. And when Jesus was talking, he was not speaking of human authority. He was speaking from the authority from God. He was acting on his authority, on behalf of him. He was coming consistently to the Father, not doing anything on his own terms as a human, but he was claiming that he didn't have any human authority. He had holy authority, which came from God. The second point that I would like to speak on, continuing the verse, is stating Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. Jesus is saying that if you follow him, you will not walk in darkness. If you don't follow, you do walk in darkness. And so darkness, it is obvious that it is in the world. Jesus here is not taking away darkness. He's taking you away from darkness when you completely surrender yourself to him. You see, it's really simple for us Christians to follow people to see what they're doing, to be with them. And it's, we kind of assimilate that when we follow people, 
We follow Jesus in the same way. But following Jesus is not just simply tagging a lawn and just walking wherever he is going. Following Jesus, it means that when you follow him, you have him. Wherever you go, he is there. Wherever, wherever you surround yourself with the people, he is there. And when you follow him, you have him. The verse says, I am the light. Whoever follows will have the light. I am the light. You follow, you have. It is important for us Christians to have, as believers, to have Christ in us in our daily lives. The word follow sometimes is used in a general sense, and in this case, it's speaking to a crowd of people. And it surely can mean more than this, that we can actually not be considered a crowd of people. We can be considered individuals that are actually longing to have a relationship with Christ. We can follow him in that sense. And this verse completely says that we have to submit ourselves to Christ completely. God, I notice that he doesn't accept a half-hearted follower. He doesn't, for those that don't accept Christ fully, aren't receiving him as Savior, but not following him as Lord. There is a person that came, that came to Jesus wanting to follow him. Jesus spoke to him on, on his behalf, and this, um, this passage is recorded in the Gospel of Luke 18, verses 18 through 27. It's about a rich ruler, and the ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Jesus, seeing that he had become sad, said, How difficult it is for those that have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for the rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, Then who can be saved? But he said, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Amen. Do we follow Jesus on a consistent basis? Do we have Jesus in our lives today as Christians? Continuing the verse, the last part of the verse, we come to the point that says, but we'll have the light of life. The life of Jesus acted on our life enables us, lets us see light. Until you have light, Jesus says light, you are dead. And it's a common fact that dead people cannot see. But when life is made known to us, this light, you are born from above. You are born again. You, you think differently. You see differently. Your life changes. The people back then, they were blind. They couldn't see. They couldn't change. And this light that was not in them allowed them not to be born again. And this constant ways of people moves on through the genealogy and up to today. There are people who are just not born again and do not follow Christ as they should. Jesus Christ made two promises in this significant single verse. The first promise is this. His followers will never walk in darkness as true followers of the light. We will never follow the ways of sin and never live in a state of continually sinning. When we strive for the light, when we consistently seek Christ, our sinful paths fall. Jesus is in us, and impurity leaves. But it's not always as easy as it sounds. It's a consistent, disciplined work to get sin out of our lives, and only Jesus is the way to help us out of it. The second promise is that we should reflect the light of life. We should show Jesus to the people around us, to our friends, to our families, just as he came and showed himself to the world. He commands us to be lights in Matthew, and something really similar to that. As we leave home after the service today, I would want us to carefully examine ourselves, 
look at ourselves, where am I going wrong, where, where are my actions and thoughts, and why is the light not consistently with us? How am I utilizing Christ's light to grow myself and deepen my spiritual life, my spiritual roots? How am I growing? You see, when the light enters inside, we have to carry good and healthy relationships with the people around us. Some of us claim that we have the light, but we just can't sometimes sit by some people at church. And I thought we had the light. We have to grow in the light and completely step out of the darkness with both feet. Not just one foot out and one foot in. We have to both, with both feet, leave the darkness and be in the light. Following Jesus was not intended to be burdensome or miserable or something hard or unpleasant. Following Jesus is an act of submission. You're sacrificing yourself to God. You're allowing him to pour through you. And when you completely surrender and you, you stop your walk in darkness, your life changes. It leads you daily. And following Jesus, to be honest, is much more easier and much more better than stumbling always in the dark. In the dark, you can't see where you're going. In the light, you can. The Lord was not interested in making salvation easy. He was interested in making it genuine from the heart, from pure intentions, with pure desires. He wants our absolute allegiance, our obedience, and us obeying to him. And this is the time when Jesus said, I am the light. During this festival, during this festival of booths, when Israelites were remembering how God delivered them, how God led them, and here Jesus is saying that he is God, that he will lead them, the whole world. And with this, we have to consistently remind ourselves that there is always a light, and we should always turn the switch on. Amen. Дорогие братья и сестры, я в конце приведу итог о том, что я говорил. Я сегодня читал... Из Евангелия от Иоанна, 8 главы, с 12 стихе, что Иисус есть свет. И в нашей жизни иногда очень трудные и тяжелые моменты есть, но мы замечаем, что когда Иисус говорит здесь к израильтянам, к, к людям, Он говорит, что Он есть свет жизни. Он их а, будет вести, и Он является Богом. Он является Мессией, которую, он, которую они все ожидали. И, и Он дает им возможность, что не ходить... А, не ходить в темноте, не ходить там, где тяжело. Он являет себя помощью, но это он себя являет тогда, когда мы ему отдаем себя, когда мы говорим греху нет, а ему да. Когда мы понимаем его, его жертву на кресте и понимаем, что он сделал для нас, только тогда мы можем знать, что это как ходить в свете. Я извиняюсь, если я Иногда что-то неправильно перевел. Вы поймите, мне очень тяжело все на английском сразу три секунды по-русски привести. Но я надеюсь, что для некоторых это ободрение и для некоторых это понимание, что нам нужно ходить во свете. Слава Богу. Аминь. Я вас, я вас приглашаю на молитву.